After the 2008 election cycle, when Barack Obama beat Hillary Clinton for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination, he persuaded her to join his cabinet as Secretary of State, America's highest-ranking diplomat. She faced close questioning from the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in January of 2009 and was swiftly confirmed by the full Senate. Now, one of her major initiatives in her first year at the State Department was her work with the Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative. In July 2010, Secretary Clinton's many travels took her to the Korean DMZ, and by June of that year, she'd visited 100 countries. But the biggest crisis of her tenure was the death of the ambassador to Libya and three other Americans last September. The following month, Hillary Clinton took responsibility for the security lapses that led to that attack in Benghazi, Libya. Despite that, Secretary Clinton will leave office as one of the most popular members of President Barack Obama's cabinet and one of the country's most admired women. But what is her legacy in the foreign policy arena, and how will history judge her? Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State at a time when the United States was facing an array of formidable, if not altogether unfamiliar, foreign policy problems. They range from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to the intractable Middle East conflict. Four years later, many of those issues remain unresolved, but her supporters say there were some significant foreign policy achievements, especially in Asia. Working to open and normalize ties with Burma, that's a huge achievement that Secretary Clinton championed uh, from the beginning of her tenure as Secretary of State. Uh, and also, in the wake of the killing of bin Laden in May 2011, Secretary Clinton was dispatched to Pakistan and worked to essentially smooth U.S.-Pakistan relations. But the secretary was also seen as a divisive figure, a reputation she tried hard to shed, sometimes with little success. Had I been president at the time, and I found that you did not read the cables from Benghazi, you did not read the cables from Ambassador Stevens, I would have relieved you of your post. That criticism represented what was perhaps the lowest point of her time as Secretary of State, when she had to explain her department's failings in Benghazi, Libya. Now the big question is whether she will run for the White House in 2016. She's not saying. You know, I am out of politics right now, and I don't know uh, everything I'll be doing. I'll be working on behalf of, you know, women and girls. I'll be uh, hopefully writing and speaking. Uh, those are the things that I'm planning to do right now. With her husband Bill expressing clear support for a White House bid, the smart money is that after 34 years in public office, it's unlikely the Secretary of State will be out of politics for long. She stabilized the U.S. role in the world. She reconnected uh, in, in some areas that perhaps had been uh, not areas of emphasis. Her first trip as Secretary of State was to Asia, uh, and I think she had uh, some very significant re-engagement, if you will, uh, across, uh, the, uh, across the region. Um, some of the more pivotal uh, and memorable events, obviously in 2010, gaining you know, Chinese and Russian agreement on increased sanctions uh, against uh, Iran, a transformation in the relationship with Burma, not, not something that we, we could forecast uh, in 2009. Uh, but, but more just, you know, the, she used her celebrity to great effect. She, she carried on a much broader conversation with many parts of the world going beyond governments, engaging people around the world. I think they responded very significantly to her. Well, let's look at some of the most intractable problems that the United States has faced insofar as foreign policy is concerned. We look at Iran, the DPRK, Afghanistan, Pakistan, the Middle East conflict, more recently Syria and Mali. No resolution. Well, these are hard, right? Uh, in, in some cases, I think there, in the case of Iran, there is a stronger international consensus. No one wants to see Iran uh, emerge as a, a nuclear power, either in the Middle East or anywhere else in the world. So I think there's a much stronger consensus in 2013 than there was in 2009. M most surely, um, there's been very little progress uh, in, uh, in respect to North Korea. The, the policy goals are the same, uh, but obviously in North Korea you've had a change of leadership. And, and perhaps a, a change of leadership direction in what we've seen over the past six months. Very, very difficult problem. Uh, let's look at Libya, for instance. She played a key role in persuading the president that there should be military intervention through NATO in Libya. Yet, look what happened at the end. She was called before 
Congress to explain why there was such a failure in reporting uh, the incident where four U American sure. Americans died, sure. including a senior diplomat. Um, the, the intervention was successful, uh, but the choice that Gaddafi made, uh, a different choice than Mubarak and Ben Ali, they chose to, to yield to the will of the people. Gaddafi and Bashar al-Assad have cho chose to fight you know, their own people. But uh, obviously, I I the influx of weapons into Libya poses an enduring challenge, not just for Libya, and, and Benghazi is a derivative of that, but now as we do see, those weapons have found their way uh, to Syria, they found their way to Mali, uh, and so this, this has become a much more significant and, and potent, potentially dangerous regional challenge than, than uh, we, and existed in other countries in transition. Okay, so let's leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure.